First time we are learning what the two police officers say happened the night John Crawford was killed inside the Beaver Creek Walmart. Officer Williams says he called dispatch to confirm with a 911 caller the male with the gun was pointing it at people. He said they confirmed. Williams says Crawford moved toward them in an aggressive manner. He said, quote, I felt at that moment that my life was in immediate danger. He said Crawford dropped the weapon, but as they walked toward him, he jumped up from behind the aisle and charged toward the weapon. Williams said just before Crawford reached it, he collapsed. This video contains the interview of a police officer who shot an unarmed man. Sergeant David Darkow was chatting with another officer on August 5th, 2014. It had been a typical day, and he fully expected it to continue in the same way until his shift ended. The relaxed atmosphere changed abruptly when a call came through from dispatch, alerting all officers that there was an active shooter at the local Walmart, waving a gun at other shoppers, including children. There had been several similar shootings across the country, and the officers responded swiftly, hoping that this wasn't going to become another mass tragedy. They had no idea that the situation became a tragedy the moment the 911 call was made. Instead of an active shooter, John Crawford was innocently walking through Walmart, waiting on his girlfriend to buy a new set of scrubs and ingredients for s'mores. While talking on the phone, he wandered into the sporting goods section and decided to buy an airsoft pellet gun. He removed the toy from the box and continued to walk through the aisles, not bothering anyone who passed. This was a far cry from the dangerous man waving an AK-15 at children that the caller reported to police. When Dark Isle and the others arrived, they tried to evacuate the store before moving in to confront Crawford. When they found him, they ordered him to drop the weapon and get on the floor. In shock, Crawford did not obey and moved in a manner that the police thought might be a threat. He was shot multiple times and fell to the floor. Crawford was taken to the hospital where he died from his wounds. Okay, Dave, again, um, we're here to discuss what occurred at the Walmart on the 5th. Uh, that would be Wednesday the 5th. Uh, sorry, Tuesday the 5th, Tuesday night the 5th. So I'm going to take some notes as we go through. Um, I do want to get a couple more uh, bits of information from you just to verify. Um, you told me your, your Sergeant David Darko, your rank is Sergeant. What's your badge number, Dave? 7 0. Is that the same as your radio call sign? Uh, yes. Okay. How many years' experience do you have with the department? 17. 17. Is that all with Beaver Creek in your law enforcement experience? Yes. Okay. The 911 dispatcher told the officers that it was a confirmed active shooter. Officers, um, I did not get on the radio to say I was en route um, simply because um, 
I didn't want to tie up radio time. Um, and I had other officers who were responding to dispatch saying they were en route. Okay. Um, if I take over the radio, nobody else can talk. Understood. So I just go. Yeah. Um, responded code three uh, to uh, to the area of Walmart. While we while I was en route, um, there was a couple more broadcasts from dispatch saying that um, the caller was reporting that he believed the subject was in the pet supply area of Walmart, that he was in the corner, and that he was he believed he was loading the gun. The airsoft was never loaded. Right now, you can watch another incredibly intense case on my Patreon. Discover the disturbing story of the Ken and Barbie killers, a terrifying tale about a couple obsessed with violence. Dive into their dark journey as they become immersed in unimaginable horrors. Watch this shocking video, along with many others, at patreon.com slash stranger stories plus. Um, dispatch at one point also advised that um, they, that he believed it was a rifle. Um, so they maintained contact with the initial caller and was able, they were able to um, give us updates as we were responding to the scene. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with uh, this, that store. I've, I've worked in there for um, all kinds of calls. Um, and um, you know, extra duty during the holidays. So I knew the, where the pet supply area was. Mm -hmm. And um, when I pulled in, I pulled in over by the Sam's. That's where I entered the lot um, at the Sam's location. Okay. So I knew uh, the closest entrance was that garden, um, that garden area, the outdoor area of Walmart. Mm -hmm. And so I came in that, that direction. Um, responded right to those doors because if he was in the pet area, that garden entrance would have put me literally right around the corner. As, as soon as I entered the store from the garden area, um, it would have taken me right to the pet area, which would have been on my right. So I go up, I park. Um, I see that Sean had already called 37. I had heard that he was um, he was already on scene. Sean B. Um, Sean Williams. Uh, officer that works 11 to 11 okay. and um, I heard he was already on scene um, I didn't know where he was until I pulled up and then he came running up to my location mm -hmm. um, he had a rifle um, we knew that the subject who was inside was um, possibly armed with a rifle that's what was being reported to us mm -hmm. um, and so I went as soon as I pulled up I went to the back uh, we in the supervisor's cars we keep um, our rifle, a shotgun, and a less lethal gun in a vault container in the back. So I went around to the back, grabbed um, the service uh, rifle uh, from, the, from the vault in the car, okay. um, and grabbed a, a tactical vest that belongs to Sergeant Molnar. Him and I share a car, mm -hmm. and so it's known that, um, that we'll share that, that tactical vest okay. that has um, extra mags for the AR, mm -hmm. um, tactical equipment, that type of thing. Okay. So I grab that vest, throw that around, um, load my AR, mm -hmm. and now um, Sean has his AR, I have my AR, and we tried to enter through the garden area, which would have been the closest area to where the suspect was. And you say AR, you mean AR-15? AR-15, okay. um, department issued assault rifle, although Sean Williams, I think, is his personal Okay, it's all right. All right. <clears throat> so we we attempted to go through those gar garden doors, and the doors were locked, unfortunately. Um, this caused us to both have to respond um, to the next set of doors into Walmart, um, which would be closest to um, the pharmacy type area. Okay. So it'd be the westernmost entrance that was open. Okay. Um, and, and so we can understand the layout. You, when you responded to the garden doors that were locked, is that in the front or the side of the building? Front of the building. Okay. And the other entrance that you went to is also in the front of the building? Correct. Okay. So it would be the next western entrance. Gotcha. Or, or, I'm sorry, it would be the most western entrance, mm -hmm. but it was to the east of the garden doors. Got it. Okay. okay. Um, so we walk in and immediately um, we're at a brisk pace. And um, I immediately see that a greeter still at the front 
entrance. It appeared as though some of the people around there had no idea what was going on. So I started giving commands to the greeter to get cover, get down. Um, when the police arrived on the scene, an effort was made to evacuate the Walmart. Many customers had no idea what was going on, but panicked as soon as they were told there was a shooter in the building. I believe Sean was also telling people to get out, mm -hmm. um, take cover, okay. this type of thing. Okay. Um, we both are familiar with the store, so we walk in that entrance, um, go left down the aisle, past the pharmacy, heading towards the pet supply area. Mm -hmm. Is it like a center aisle? Is it a side aisle? I mean, is it, it's, not the side, it's not the side of the building aisle. It's more of one of them. I know you have many center aisles, but it's one that's in, in toward the center. This is the aisle we're headed down is one of their main aisles that extends all the way across the store. One of several that's then all the way to the back, front to back, correct? We're going sideways. We're going side okay. at this point. We go in the front entrance, we go left, and now we're, we're headed west through the store. Gotcha. This aisle goes all the way from the garden access doors gotcha. all the way to the um, produce. Okay. So it would go all the way through, okay. cutting the store all the way. And I, I want to cut, um, I want to keep you talking on that. So the pet section is in, you sound very familiar with the directionality of the store. The pet section is in what, what corner of the store? It is in the um, southwest corner of the store. Okay, and that's a, the, the southwest corner of the store is a front corner or a back corner? Front. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. Thanks. Okay, so we're both um, moving in tandem um, at a brisk, a brisk pace, not a run, but a brisk walk. We start, um, we, we enter the pet supply area and um, don't hear or see anything initially. So we start, um, you know, walking as we're clearing each aisle, as we're walking back to that, to that corner location. Um, nobody else in the pet area from what I remember at the time. We finally get to the very last, um, aisle, and I realize that there's a fairly good chance that he's probably back there since we haven't come across him yet. You cleared all the other aisles, right? We're clearing there. them to our left mm -hmm. as we're walking okay. back west. Okay. So we're clearing each aisle. We get to the very last one, and I I remember slowing up a bit because I figured he's probably in that very last aisle. Mm -hmm. Um, have my my rifle at low ready, and um, I, I glance around that last aisle end cap, and I see a male that fits the description that we were dispatched to. Mm -hmm. um, he's standing in uh, in the corner of the store. Um, he has a a rifle that looks very similar to what I know to be an AR-15 style mm -hmm. assault weapon. Mm -hmm. um, he, has, he also has it in what I, I would refer to as a low ready type position where uh, his left hand is on the foregrip okay. of the rifle and his right hand is near the action portion of the rifle. Okay. Crawford had removed the airsoft from its packaging and was swinging it casually as he walked through the store. During most of this, he was on the phone. Before we press on, I want to take a moment to say thank you for being here. This video is completely sponsor free, so if you'd like to support the channel, subscribing is a great way to do so. Um, I had less of a view of his right hand because it was covered by the rifle, um, but I remember him holding the rifle in like a low ready type position. Okay. And he was more or less facing us at this point, um, or, or maybe slightly candid. Okay. Um, to, to, um, it would be his right or left. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so I took up a position where I tried to stay a little bit behind cover to some, to some degree at the end, end cap, mm -hmm. <clears throat> glanced around the corner um, and started giving him verbal commands to drop the, drop the gun. What specifically did you say? 
that you, you recall? It was either drop the gun or drop the weapon. Okay. But I was very loud and very clear. Go ahead. Okay. Um, at this point, um, I remember Sean Williams, Officer Sean Williams. Um, he was in a position where he was to my rear as we were going down the aisleways clearing them. And at this point, I remember he came around to my right. I was looking left. He came around to my right and um, and took a position further out um, in the in the aisle. Um, so I'm focused in on the suspect. I give him commands. Um, I I remember Sean also yelling a command. Um, I believe he said something very similar to me, drop the weapon. Um, and then I yelled at one point for him to get on the ground. And he initially, when I first yelled, uh, drop the gun or drop the weapon, um, I remember he, he, he had a, um, a look of, like, of shock uh, when, when he realized that we were there. Um, Crawford was shocked. As far as he knew, he was minding his own business when suddenly he was surrounded by armed officers yelling at him. Some people freeze out of fear, while others have a harder time processing what is going on and continue to move. It is a natural reaction that proved fatal for Crawford. Still had the gun, but kind of looked up and, and had a shocking look on his face and kind of stepped back. Um, at that point, <clears throat> despite our repeated attempts to tell him to put the gun down and get on the ground, he didn't either, and he started moving to um, in an eastern direction. So he kind of turned back and to his right, my left, um, and, and acted as though he was either going to start running or take a position of cover okay. behind the aisle. Okay. Um, That's when I heard two shots go out uh, from my right, and I knew it was coming from Sean Williams, Officer Sean Williams' rifle. Okay. Any questions? I'll let you continue on from there. Um, what, what happened after the shots were fired? After the shots are fired, the suspect goes down. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing I can tell you is that when he ran um, to my left, to his right. Mm -hmm. When he started to, to go that down that area, I, I had less, I, I was better covered in my position, mm -hmm. but I had less of a vantage point on him because now he's going down mm -hmm. the aisle that I'm taking cover behind. Right, right. Um, I, remember, I remember thinking, um, I didn't know I didn't know if he was hit or not, but he went he did go down in that in that direction, mm -hmm. and so I remember thinking, well, I've got I've got to get back to this other mm -hmm. aisle in case mm -hmm. he didn't. Right. Um, he suddenly started to get back up, and that's when it crossed my mind that maybe he he didn't get hit, mm -hmm. like maybe he just fell because mm -hmm. he had tripped or something. Yeah. And um and so I I remember thinking. I'm going to have to get over to this next aisle for when he, if he, if he makes it over that. Yeah. Um, he didn't. He went back down okay. again um, and stayed there. Um, Sean approached, and then I approached um, and hit the suspect. I covered. Um, and he's down now. I, he's down now. Mm -hmm. I immediately radioed for um, the shots fired, and I needed an ambulance on my radio. It's right here. And then, um, and then kind of covered Sean. Sean went up, um, handcuffed him. Um, I do recall after the shots went off, um, the suspect, I, I believe he muttered something after the two shots. There was two shots that went off from Sean's rifle. I believe the suspect may have muttered something after the shots, but I don't, I have no idea what it was. My right ear 
was ringing. Mm -hmm. um, it was completely numb. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the rounds had gone off. So if, if he said or if he said anything or muttered anything, I, 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 would, I wouldn't be able to tell you. And again, that's after the shots were fired that you heard him yeah. possibly saying things. Yes. Okay. How's your ear now? It's that's right now. It, um, it any, was ringing off and on for probably about two days. Yeah. Did you see anybody forward or anything? Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Um, are you on admin leave now? Yes. David, okay. And that's just department protocol typically, so the, the way they explain it to you. Correct. Okay. Um, okay, he's down. Um, Sean Cuff and you call him for medical assistance and just just go from there. You're still there for a while. What else is going Yeah. Um, at that point, <clears throat> we started to, um, the other officers began arriving mm -hmm. on scene. Um, and and uh, my officers are, are, are great at, uh, at thinking what needs to be done and, and doing it. Um, every once in a while someone would ask me, you know, what, what they wanted or what, they want, or what I wanted them to do. And um, um, basically I was directing them to get everybody out of the store mm -hmm. but contain outside so that we had witnesses gotcha. and we you know I wanted I wanted the people out right but not to leave mm -hmm. so I was trying to give them direction um, to, to evacuate people mm -hmm. out but but maintain our, our witnesses mm -hmm. once we got out there sure cordon off the scene um, somebody brought in tape I can't tell you who it was I good enough on that yeah. brought in tape and started cordon off the area mm -hmm. Um, I remember Sean yelling for Stahl to go get his first aid kit, which was a great move. Mm -hmm. um, so Officer Stahl, after, um, when it responded to his vehicle, his cruiser. Most of the officers who arrived did not know what was going on. The information that had been relayed to them was inaccurate, which would take time to sort out. Got our first aid kit and um, Officer Sean Williams and Officer Matt Stahl began attempting um, first aid uh, by using a tourniquet. Okay. Um, so suspect bleeding. Suspect bleeding. Um, uh, I would I would call it kind of a labor breathing. Okay. Um, I could I could see that his elbow was shattered, and I could see that he was on his belly. Mm -hmm. He was cuffed, mm -hmm. and I could see that he was bleeding from another location it wasn't it wasn't necessarily his elbow mm -hmm. um but it was clear that there was other injuries i don't know where okay but it was coming out of probably this area okay. because the blood was starting to pull there um he um his eyes were open for for um you know some some time but then uh, they started to roll back in his head and his breathing started becoming more okay uh, laborious all right and then uh, a more pertinent at that point, but we asked you some more questions until the EMS arrives as far as the medical. You guys did what you could. EMS does arrive, correct? EMS arrives, um, and af after, they, after they arrived, um, you know, my role, my role became more of one um, where I needed to um, deal with the officer that was involved at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, medical, medical was there, and so um, I, I wanted to get the officer away from the scene at that point, and um, I secured his rifle. Mm -hmm. um, I gave him my rifle, mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> I, I called for another medic for him. You gave who your rifle? Um, Sean Williams, Officer Sean Williams. Okay, so you took his rifle because it would have been involved in the shooting? Correct. Okay. And what's the purpose of giving him yours? You know, I was always trained as a supervisor. You, uh -huh. you know, you, you you don't leave them unarmed, but but you switch if you have to, and give him give him your okay. weapon, okay, so that he doesn't feel like mm -hmm. he's 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 weaponless. Okay, so that matches up to your training. Correct. Okay. Um, to take us a little further, what else? Okay, I secured his rifle um, outside in the um, rear of my cruiser. Mm -hmm. Um, and and my, the rest of my interaction really dealt with um, Sean Williams, Officer Sean Williams, and, and, and seeing to it that he um, got medical attention and was transported to the hospital. 
Um, it should probably be noted that Sergeant Molnar um, was leaving um, work at the time this went out. Okay. He was still at the building, mm -hmm. and so he heard it over the radio and immediately came up to the scene. Mm -hmm. um, Sergeant Molnar um, did a great job at taking over um, a command, um, incident command at the scene okay. um, since I was in no position to be doing that. Okay. Um, and he orchestrated a lot of the efforts between us, the fire department, mutual aid who was responding in, mm -hmm. Green County Sheriff's saw deputies Big responded. Response. Yeah. 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 Okay. We got Fairborn, right. Green County, I think Wright State may have come. Okay. So I mean there was a lot. Yeah. You know, we had a medical issue that was also going on. The stress of the incident caused another shopper to have a fatal heart attack. Um, from the from a female mm -hmm. um, who had gone down because of a medical issue, completely unre unrelated as far as the shooting's concerned, mm -hmm. but was there at the same time. So we had we had two two people that were having unrelated medical um, some incidents of some kind, and then the suspects. So you're saying there was three total? We three had three. Medical. We had we had three medics responding to those three people, mm -hmm. and then I was calling for a fourth medic for Officer Sean Williams. Okay. So we, it well, was kind of a big scene. Was was calling them for Williams? Uh, was he? actually hurt or was no, it more no. protocol of the I, I again I've always been trained mm -hmm. that um, that that's what that's right. what you do when an officer is in an, involved in a shooting is okay. you, you call call yep. a medical you don't know what's going on um, mm -hmm. internally with with them you right. don't you don't you just want it's precautionary sure. but also um, you know it's a, it's a traumatic incident so post traumatic right. you want to make sure that they're well taken care of yep. Um, check of the vitals, transport to the hospital, mm -hmm. you just get them checked over. So it was procedural, okay. but that's how I've been trained. Okay. The, uh, so when you're referring to those extra um, medical instances, you had the suspect, yes. uh, the young lady who unfortunately passed away of the heart condition, right. and then what was the other situation? You know, I learned later that um, there, was a, there was another female who was pregnant? Okay, you would, so you don't have to comment anything those you learn you learn later. You didn't. You yeah. weren't directly aware or involved in any of the other two medical. I centers. knew. I knew that medics were responding for people yeah. that were that were having some kind of medical issue, okay. but I wasn't involved in those at all. Good enough. Um, I, the only thing I did was um, I contacted Officer Nicely at one point to make sure that they had an AED for the girl that was having a heart attack, and she responded affirmative. They were trying to AED on her. You, you made that call to the radio? Yes. That? Okay. And did you say, so you said you didn't call in on your response to the scene, were you on the radio during that entire time for anything else? While I was responding to the scene? Yeah. Only, only to, no, I think my, my first broadcast was to tell them that I was on scene. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we'll, uh, we're going to play some radio traffic for you so you can identify yourself and, and right. uh, go back and refresh your memory on what's occurring. Um, we're going to take you through it several times today with a lot of questions. The, uh, uh, but I did want to point out, you. we are here at the time of your choosing because you have a closing on your house today, correct? I do. Okay. What time does that occur? One. Okay. And it's about uh, 10. 45 right now, so um, we expect to have you out in plenty of time for that, but I didn't want to make note of that, that uh, we tried to accommodate your time. I we tried to accommodate getting I in appreciate here. That. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's get through what we can here. The, uh, and Dave, uh, did you make a verbal statement to the department after the incident? Yes. Okay, was it verbal or written? Verbal. Okay, and uh, recorded? Yes. Okay. Is there anything that you recall about that verbal statement that you feel uh, is needs to change at this time? I don't think so. Okay. And I know it's been a couple of days. I know it's a uh, uh, very significant and potentially traumatic incident. So you know, we understand any any variability on that. Um, but no no written statement whatsoever, correct? No. Okay. And they just, as a department, they just took your statement and then put you on admin leave as a matter of department protocol. Correct. Okay. Anytime a weapon is discharged, the officer is placed on leave pending an investigation. 
Dave, going back to the response, the uh, you stated that you were told there was a suspect armed in the Walmart and believed to be in the corner of the pet section or in the pet section, um, appeared to be loading a gun, and it, the gun appeared to be a rifle. Correct. Am I missing anything significant on those details? Um. The man who called 911 had military experience and told the dispatcher that Crawford had an AK-15 and was pointing it at children. At one point, I, I, I believe I remember Sean Williams getting on and asking dispatch over the radio if um, to confirm that he was waving it or pointing it at people, and okay. dispatch said affirmative. Okay, and that's and that's pretty significant. Okay. Yes, sir. Staying with that for a minute, and uh, um, I apologize, we might jump a little bit, but since we're on communications, when you and Williams are entering the store, you didn't really state that you guys had any verbal communication. Did, did you guys discuss anything going through? Um, as far as me and him before we entered, is that what you're... Yeah, before, during, and... In, in, Like game plan type scenario. You know, I I don't I don't recall a lot of verbal communication between. We both just kind of knew what to do. You heard, <laughs> you heard the same thing on the radio. You knew where you were going. We knew, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we both we both knew the area. We both, you know, I, I parked over by the garden area, so I think uh, Sean had parked on the other side. Mm -hmm. And when he saw me pull up, he worked my way, walked my way. Yep. I think. I think I'm only speculating that um, he, he figured that's where we were going to go in. Okay. So he came to me, mm -hmm. um, but then those doors were locked, and so mm -hmm. um, you there wasn't a lot of verbal communication between us. As soon as we entered the store, we were both communicating with other people, right? Trying to. I don't. I don't remember if. Fair, if, enough, fair enough. If he. Yeah. If, if we had any type of communication, I. I'm not recalling that. And your point being. Seemingly, you guys have trained for situations like this, and there was we had just left. trained for situations. Like Give me this. something on that. What, what would you think? Um, we had just had a, some people call it an active shooter training. Mm -hmm. Some people call it a quad training. Okay. Um, we had just gone through that. Um, our training records can reflect the, the exact date, sure. but it was um, within a month. I think we did it um, July. <sighs> My platoon was a Thursday in July, um, possibly even the the 24th or something. Okay. I don't have my my phone on me. So it's no problem. Yeah, those details we can verify later. Yeah. It's, 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 so we had so you can imagine. I mean, it was within yeah week. We had just been through this this training. 20 days with it. Obviously. It was a eight hour block of yeah. of quad training. Who ran that? Do you remember? Yeah, uh, Officer Suki runs back training for Through us. this in department? house. Yes. Okay, in house. Yeah. Had you had active shooter training before that? No, no we, we have it annually. Okay. Um, building clearings involved in that at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. Building clearing. In fact, that was most most of this training. Mm -hmm. um, this time was building okay. training. Okay. And you or said building clearing. I'm sorry. Good enough. Yeah. You said that your uh, platoon. You called your platoon. Is that what you said? Correct. Okay. Your platoon was involved in this training, and, and Sean Williams is part of your platoon. Um. Yeah. He he is on my well. Um. He would have been with an, another platoon for this training. Okay. But he's had this training recently as well. Oh yeah. And you guys yeah. have it annually. Yeah. Okay. Um. He's not directly under my platoon, even though he works four hours with me. Yeah, he worked on a power shift, so it's okay. a little different. You don't recall any communication with him walking through um, as you were clearing aisles, um, even to the point of, you know, you, you stated at a certain point you told the suspect put the weapon down or put the gun down. Yeah. Um, did you have any communication directly with Officer Williams between that time at all that you recall? No. Okay. The do you recall stating either again put the gun down or put the weapon down? Do you recall if you had stated it multiple times, one time? I I know I stated it one time, mm -hmm. and I know that I told him to get on the ground. Although they gave Crawford multiple warnings, 
They were hurled at him so quickly that he didn't have time to fully understand what was going on before they began to fire. One time, and this is before, you told him to get on the ground before any shots were fired? I, I believe so. Okay. I believe I told him to get on, get on the ground, or no, I'm sorry. I told him to, I know for a fact that I told him to drop the gun. That was my first communication with him. Okay. Um, that's when he, he kind of shockingly mm -hmm. glanced over. That was, his, that was the first time he, he knew we were there. Okay. And I know that, that Sean um, again told him to. Right. Okay. Do you remember what Sean said? It was drop your weapon, okay. something to that effect. Do you recall if he repeated it once, twice? I only remember once. Okay. How close in succession um, did he repeat commands after you, to the best of your recollection, Dave? Um, time's tough under, under these circumstances. Absolutely. I, I mean, it, it was it was fairly close. Okay. It all happened. It all happened very very quickly. I mean. Okay. And we're kind of to the meat of it here, and we, there's a lot of other kind of accessory questions, and, and I'm, I'm going to ask you some things that I, you've already stated, and I want to assure you I'm not trying to trip you up. It's so we sure. get a clear understanding of what occurred, and it is tough to go through, especially in a, in a critical incident like that, and, and have, you know, a very solid recollection of all the key minor details. Um, when you... According to what you said, you first you made first observation of the suspect before Williams did. Williams is on the other side of you. Is that sound accurate? Yeah, he was he was more to my rear as we okay. were going down the aisles, clearing. Them. Okay, so to the best of your recollection, you would have seen the suspect first before, and you you, you don't have to speak for Sean Williams. He's not here, right. but in your mind, you probably saw the guy before Williams did. I believe so. Okay, so your command came first. Right. Um, did you run hot to the scene? Your vehicle, did you run hot to the scene? Code 3, yeah. Okay. Uh, sirens, lights, everything yeah. going. Um, did did you see anybody anybody else's vehicle hot? You know, Williams was there, you know, if he ran hot, was his lights still on? Um, no, I don't know, because he, he was right there. Okay. So I don't even know okay. if he responded Code 3 or not. He was okay. he was over by the BP, which is located right beside Walmart. Okay. So he would have been literally in the same parking lot. Okay. And he parked um, over on the east side, yeah. towards the east side. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I never even saw his vehicle. And yeah. when I got there, I pulled up. Yeah. I immediately started to get out and, and go to the vault to get my weapon as he was walking up to me. Okay. Is is this a a call like this? Um, is this something that uh, changes your mind frame when you get a call of a armed suspect in a in a public store? Absolutely. Okay. The when when you received that call, did you um, immediately think to yourself that you may have to engage an armed suspect? Yeah. Okay. So you ran out to the scene for that, you weren't running covertly? No. Okay. And there was a couple times where um, I toggled my siren, my lights were on, but I toggled my siren on and off. Um, and honestly, it's kind of in my mind, it's kind of a it's kind of a toss up because you know you you have to clear intersections. You have you can't be a traffic hazard on your on your way there. But it's always in the back of my mind when I'm going to something like this that you know if I run up blazing with my siren, um, you can you can turn uh, a situation into a very quickly turn a situation into like. A, a, a hostage situation yeah. um, at some point. There's no know. strict training black and white that says you respond to this type of scene this way or this because you have imperfect information coming in on the radio. You know, you've got an armed guy where there's civilians and possibly dozens if not hundreds of them in a Walmart. You're doing what you think is the best under the situation and getting there and letting people know you're coming. Yeah, and, and at the same time, you know, you... Um, you know, I, I didn't want to turn. If if you, um, it, for for instance, it's like you're responding to um, a potential bank robbery. Mm -hmm. You go in blazing with your si lights and siren. You can turn a bank robbery into a hostage situation very quickly right. if you come in, you know, with your siren on. So, 
as I'm responding, I, I toggled the siren yeah. on and off to try to, I guess, just try to prevent something like that from happening. Great. Um, and the you stated also, so again, the suspect, to your knowledge, at least at that point, was in the front of the store. Yes. Near the front of the store. You're arriving front. in the front of the store. Yes. You're arriving hot, so your sirens are going. So that's an indication the police are on the way. Yeah, okay. but I had killed the sirens, but, you know, as when I got into the parking lot, I killed the sirens. Okay. Um, but you entered the parking lot first before you shut them down? To the best of your recollection? Yeah. Okay. Crawford did not show any indication on the surveillance video that he heard the sirens. And as soon as I jumped over the Pentagon intersection, as I'm, you know, I was coming down Commons. Okay. So I'm coming down Commons, and... Um, and when I got through the Pentagon, that's a busy intersection. Mm -hmm. So I got through the Pentagon intersection, entered the Sam's, it would be the Sam's parking lot first. Okay. Um, I believe I shut my sirens down at that point. Okay. Still had the lights going, but I shut the sirens down. What was the reason for shutting them down? The sirens? Mm -hmm. Just like I stated, I, you know, I'm approaching the scene. Okay. And, um, you know, just from a tactical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, and when you enter the store, you uh, stated that you pretty much immediately were yelling at people to take cover. Yeah. The um, first person we met, we came to was the was the greeter. Okay. Um, and and I could tell the greeter had no idea what was what was going on. Okay. What what was your tone like? What was your volume like when you telling them to take cover? Um, I would say it was a a, a medium tone. I mean, I can have kind of a loud, booming voice anyway. Okay. So I mean, it wasn't I wasn't screaming okay. at him, but I was but I was very direct. Okay. And said, "Get down, get cover." Okay. A couple of times. Yes. All right. Did 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 that? So that's in the direct front of the store. I'm assuming registers right there and so forth. The greeter. Um. No, the register. So you're not even past. You're not even past the greeter area in the in the Walmart, which is the entrance section. You're yeah, the entrance greeter. section. They have. I call them a greeter, but really they stand there and watch people as they're right, leaving. Right, right. So, um, so the registers, all the registers would have been to our right. Okay. Did you did you say anything further to the people that you encountered at that point? We both were. I mean, we both were were um, were telling people get down, get. Get cover. I remember. I remember at least twice yelling at people to get down and get cover. Okay. And then as we started going back towards the the pharmacy area, um, and subsequently to the pet supply area, mm -hmm. um, it seemed like there was a lot less people. So I so I didn't. Yeah. I, I don't think I engaged anybody else at that point. Okay. We didn't see anybody else at that point. Okay. Did it seem like anybody was fleeing at that point or anything? I don't remember anybody fleeing at that point. Okay. I was I was pretty focused on the aisles leading up to the pet and then the pet aisle. So my attention wasn't so much what was going on mm -hmm. in the store. It was to my left down the aisles. Gotcha. Pharmacy okay. and then pet. You're doing what you can to tell people there's a situation. You want them to, to be safe. It's uh, sometimes not sure where to tell people to evacuate or take cover in those types yeah. of situations. Yeah, yeah we right? didn't know. Okay. The uh, what what uniform did you have on? If you did it's, have one, it's our um, it's our summer uniform shirt. Mm -hmm. It's a polo shirt mm -hmm. with um with a badge mm -hmm. on this side, name on this side, police across the back, um, and uh, in big lettering. You threw your vest over the uniform. Um, I did have a tactical vest over. Um, it wasn't zipped up, mm -hmm. so it would have been open still. Okay. Does do you call it your tactical vest as police on the back of it as well? I don't know. Okay. It's not. I don't own it. Okay. And um, and I know um, yeah. So okay. Sergeant Molnar would know that. It's his vest. You come in uniform. You came in um, at least up to the parking lot lights and started telling people to take cover. Um, do you recall ever staying police at any point in the no. evening? No. Okay. Um, you felt that your presence was identified at least by uh, what you were wearing and yes. in that situation. Yes. And again, you did tell the suspect to get down. Uh, you just don't you don't recall at that moment saying anything about police. Correct. Okay.
let's let's stick in the uh, let's stick in the corner for a minute, Dave. When uh, when you first encountered the um, the suspect, you said that you could observe he was holding a weapon. Yes. Okay. And you even went to specify that it looked like it could be an AR-15 or that type of that style. Okay. That style, the assault rifle. Rifle, yes. Okay. And you had no other information. Darko and the others had been told that the weapon was an AK-15. Going in with that belief, they would not have looked closely since that is what they expected to see. Um, then what you've already said about the weapon and what it, what type it may be or the authenticity or, of such weapon? No, uh, I mean, it, you know, it, it, looked, um, it looked exactly like an AR style mm -hmm. rifle that you know, I've seen a hundred times, and um, the information we were getting from dispatch was that he was possibly loading mm -hmm. the rifle. And that came across radio traffic? Yes. Yeah. Okay. When we were responding. And, and you were aware that there was a, a witness, I think you even stated that, there was a witness right there giving information to dispatch, a witness in the store. We had, yeah, we had a 911 call. Our 911 caller was yeah. still um, yeah. online with, with dispatch. Dave, we're almost three days from the incident now. Um, some of this has been released in the media. Um, are you aware at this point what that weapon was? Yes. Okay. When did you first become aware of that? I um, I got a call from Sergeant Molnar. It was, I think it was later that night um, after I was already home. Okay. At any time during your response, Prior to the shooting, did anybody indicate to you he's holding a pellet gun? No, no. Okay. In fact, when I left the scene to go to the hospital with um, Officer Williams, mm -hmm. um, I was still under the impression that it was a real AR-15. And that's how long after the, the shooting incident? Are we talking an hour? Are we talking? Oh yeah, I. You know, if the if the shooting occurred somewhere around eight. 8.20 mm -hmm. p.m. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wasn't released to go home until after midnight. Okay, so hours yes. before you even... Okay. I had, yeah, I had no idea before it was they, a pellet gun until I got a call at home. Right, and it, it sounds like, Dave, you did um, everything you were trained to do as, as far as the uh, uh, response after the shooting, um, and you left it up to uh, the incident commander coming on scene. They secured it. You guys had secured the suspect. Yeah. There's no other suspects involved that you could that you could identify. So, as far as you know, everything was secured. Somebody had eyes on the weapon on the ground. Nobody, the, the priority wasn't to check that weapon at that time or clear that. It was right. to get medical attention for the suspect. Right. So that's not accurate. Right. Yeah. That's, okay. That's accurate. We had roped off the area. Um, you know, we had we had um, given attempted first aid to the suspect, got him removed. Um, then my, my attention turned to getting the officer um, medical attention because the scene was secure at that point. We had mutual aid that was being called in mm -hmm. to do um, secondary searches of the, the building to ensure there was no other suspects and no other problems and try to, um, and try to get people, more people evacuated because there was, we were still getting reports that people were were still locked in the pharmacy area. Mm -hmm. We I don't think we ever found them, so I don't know where the delay came from. Mm -hmm. But but we we kept getting calls from people that were hunkered down in the pharmacy area. Okay. And, and I don't I don't know what happened with them. Okay. Well, I, I, obviously they got out at some point. Right. But, but yeah, that's right. a kind of chaotic scene we're dealing with. Right. Right, lots of people on a Walmart at eight o'clock on a Tuesday evening. Uh, Dave, so you're told you're told a suspect has a weapon, and as, as you're responding to the scene, did you have any reason to believe that he wasn't armed? No, you, I never reason to believe he was armed with a rifle and he was possibly loading that rifle. Okay, and even to the extent where someone said he was waving it at customers, waving it at. at Pointing and/or waving it at, at at customers, at other people. So during store. during your response, at any time, did you believe that the public may be under threat because of this call? Oh, absolutely. Okay. When you were entering uh, the building, did you at all um, fear for your own safety or take precautions for your own safety? Absolutely. Okay. When you uh, when you round the corner, you see the suspect. Now did the 
you knew that you were looking for somebody in the pet aisle holding the rifle. Right. Did you have any other description on the suspect before you entered? You know, I don't remember if, um, for some reason, I, I believe I remember dispatch saying it was a black male. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know. So, so your key to that was you're looking for somebody holding the rifle. My key was looking for some. I knew it was. I remember it was a male subject, and they were holding a holding a rifle, and they were in the pet area. Okay. The you made the first call to have the suspect put the gun down. The first uh, command to him. Yes. Um, the 911 caller spoke as if there was no doubt about what he was seeing and that people were in imminent danger. The police had to act with the thought that innocent people could be killed at any moment. Williams made the secondary command, same or similar. Yes. And then he fired. Yeah, and, and at one point I, I told him to get on the ground. And whether and whether that was as the shots were going off or whether it was before the shots were going off, I do remember saying that. Did the suspect immediately comply with your command? He he didn't comply with anything we said. Okay. After he was startled, he began darting to his right, mm -hmm. to my left, mm -hmm. and um, and taking up some kind of. It's hard to describe how. How he uh, how he reacted, mm -hmm. but the best I can say or describe it, it was it was a startled reaction, mm -hmm. and then it was a a movement as though he was either going to take off running mm -hmm. or he was going to get he, he was going to seek cover behind that immediate aisle, mm -hmm. that first aisle, something to that effect. But he was but he was darting as he was moving, mm -hmm. while he was still at low ready with the rifle, okay. still had it in his hands like this. Okay. And he, he kind of turned mm -hmm. and, and, um, and began moving in that direction. And in, in my mind, um, I'm thinking there's no way we can, we can allow someone who's already waved and pointed this gun at people, mm -hmm. possibly loaded, and, you know, a, an assault rifle mm -hmm. to go to, to get out of our contained area and get into the general public where I know there's all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. So your your perception was he didn't comply. You you gave him what you thought were specific orders. He wasn't complying. The orders were repeated, and then Williams fired twice. Okay. Did you recall hearing it twice? Yeah. Did you recall. Okay. Um, let's stay on that for a minute, Dave. The uh, why didn't you fire? Um, you know, like I said, I I. I took up a little bit more what I felt was a tactical position behind the aisle. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately when you do that, if the suspect moves, you you have less of a vantage point. Okay. Um, he moved to a position where my line of fire decreased as he went to his right, my left. Okay. Even though I was in a little bit I would say more of a a tactical position mm -hmm. behind behind cover, mm -hmm. um, I lost that line of sight when he mm -hmm. when he went that direction. Okay. Where Sean Sean was towards the middle of the aisle, maybe in a less tactical position for him as far as defensively, mm -hmm. but he was in a he had a better line of fire. Okay. He didn't he didn't lose the suspect like I did. Now had he continued or had, had Sean not been able to um, to, to shoot him before he made it, um, I would have been in a better position to get to that next aisle over. Okay. But he, but he dropped before he got there. Okay. Did, did anything, um, what other, what other uh, 17 year old veteran of law enforcement, you've had a ton of training. Yeah. Um, what other specialty training have you, have you had personally? Um, is, do you qualify every year on your firearm? Every year. Okay. Are you qualified on the AR-15 that you carry? No. Yep. Okay. Um, you just took active shooter. You do that every year, at least for this, the past several years, many yeah. years. Yeah. It's, it's become an issue. Yeah. Um, I've been on the, the SWAT team, um, the area SWAT team. Yeah, I've, been team. I've been I've been on that 14 years. Okay. Did anything uh, that 
you did yourself that night violate any of the training that you've had? No. Did anything that you saw Williams do, including firing his weapon at the suspect, violate any training that you that you had or that you know that he has had? No. Okay. Did you feel he was justified in pulling the trigger at that yes. point? Yes. Okay. The um, how, how long have you been? Uh, could you estimate? I used to do the um, run active shooter training for the attorney general's office too. In my recollection, um, well, uh, let's say I know approximately when, when that all started. How, how long going back do you think like your department got more involved in saying we're going to have annual active shooter training? Has it been every year of your 17 years? No, no. Okay. Um, Is you, it, as you know, I mean, um, Columbine changed a lot. So, you know, I, I would say shortly after law enforcement recognized that we can't do what we did at Columbine, mm -hmm. that's when quad training first yeah. came out. Right. Um, our department's very, um, very proactive on mm -hmm. on our on our training, and I can't imagine um, as soon as that, as soon as law enforcement community took a, a different position after Columbine and started instituting that quad training, I, I would say it would have to be very shortly after that that okay. we started training that way here. And there's and there's uh, even some schools like my niece's school just finally started the Alice training, and we've known that schools have been doing that for, you know, five, seven, ten years, or whatever you call it, but, you know, the, the run, hide, fight instead of the, the break and cover. So it's a different, different world, basically, than um, um, the days. Were, were you at ever any point in your, in your training, going back 17 years, trained to secure a scene, mobilize outside, and then come up with a plan to go inside? Um, well, well, yes. Okay, and that's, uh, is it fair to say, or you tell me, has that, has that approach changed in your 17 years? Yeah, that, that approach has, has evolved. Okay. As, as critical incidents have, you know, have enlightened yeah. the law enforcement community on how we, we, we've needed to change that. Right, so one, so possibly, it's going to the next, I'm not asking this, uh, the date of 17 years ago, but possibly in that time, or you're at least aware, going back, law enforcement used to have a certain approach that was thought to be a best practice was stay outside, keep everybody from getting hurt, and we'll come up with a plan out there. Yeah. That's more of a pre-Columbine type of uh, process. And, and so is it fair to say, is that what you're getting at, Dave, is it fair to say that now that um, officers, are ex first responders, are expected to engage the shooter? Yes. Okay. And is that what you feel like you did that night? Absolutely. Okay. Officers are now taught to engage the shooter quickly to try to minimize any casualties. Dave, when the, you, you said you remember the suspect going down, and to your recollection, that's after the shots were fired. Correct. Okay. And he gets back up? He, he at least attempted to. Okay. Um, I, remember, I remember thinking in my mind whether he had actually hit him or not, because he went down initially, and then um, almost started to struggle to get back up again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying. To, go, go ahead. ahead. You, you go ahead. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember if I if I started to go back towards that other aisle when he. Um, I thought I thought that I did. That second tried to. I glanced towards that second aisle mm -hmm. to see whether he was going to get up and start running because that would have that would have been more my responsibility at that point if he. If he had done that, because I was I was on that side, I would have had a, a better angle of that second aisle than Sean did out in the, the, okay. the, the first immediate aisle. Uh, understood. Um, and understanding again of, of all that was encapsulated in those brief moments that night. Do you recall if the when the suspect went down? Was he still armed at the time? Do you recall that? I I think he dropped the I think he dropped the rifle after he was hit. Okay. So he's hit and he's down. He looks to be getting back up. Um, did you, at the time you already answered this day, but did, at the time you saw the suspect with the weapon, did you think the suspect was a threat? When he had the weapon? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Um, when he get, goes down and he gets back up, was he potentially still a threat to you, even if the gun's on the ground, 
Is it hard to say at this point what you were thinking at, the, at that time? Of course. Uh, anybody who's, who's willing to put themselves in the position he had done is going to be perceived as a threat by me. Okay. And I mean, we don't know if he's armed with anything else. I mean, if he just because he doesn't have a rifle anymore doesn't mean he's not armed anymore. Right. And even though uh, Officer Williamson just fired, the suspect gets back up. You guys don't fire on him again. Uh -huh. He goes back down his own volition or some, or somehow. Correct. Okay. What's the? Why didn't you guys fire again? Um, we could see clearly at that point that um, that he was no longer a threat. Okay. So, you you are you trying to say he went down very quickly after he got back up? Yeah. Okay. It, it happened very quickly. He okay. struggled to try to to get back up and then and went right back down again and stayed down. Okay. So. And so that's when we approach. So when he's getting back up, he's still a potential threat, and that's in your mind, but then he's going down right away, so they changed it pretty quickly. So right, right. Up. Because because in my mind, I'm thinking, did he, did he get hit? Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if he had gotten hit because he's starting to get back up again, mm -hmm. but then he goes right back down again. And so I thought, I guess he did. I mean, okay. Yeah. This is all happening with, you know. We're, we're, yeah, we're within well, split seconds. We're well aware. <laughs> Half we're well aware. We appreciate you walking through it a bunch of times. I know it's difficult to, uh, to right. do. Um, Dave, do you have do you have any prior involvement in shooting incidents? No. Okay. How I mean, it? I've I've been on shooting incidents, but not um, not to this degree where I'm actually involved in the shooting incident. Okay. You know? So, well, take me there for, so have you, have you, you've arrived after a shooting has occurred, or you've right. been there, have, have you observed other officers shooting? Dark Al had never been directly involved in another shooting, and he had never been accused of using excessive or aggressive force. Have, have you been on scene when another officer has shot No, I, okay. the, probably, I'm probably the closest one was um, our, our SWAT team responded to um, a call up at Huber Heights mm -hmm. where um, a sniper had shot. Um, a sh uh, had shot a suspect. Okay. Um, and we, in in my unit, um, the Beaver Creek element uh, um, arrived shortly after. Okay. Um, the man was still down, was Got still it. laying there. Um, you never fired a weapon on another person. No. Okay. Sergeant David Darkow did not fire his weapon. Sean Williams was the officer to fire the fatal shots. Neither officer had been involved in a case where excessive force was used and both had high scores for their behavior. It was determined that both acted according to their training and the information with which they had been provided. Both were returned to active duty. Thank you for watching. If you like this type of content and want to support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description below. You'll be able to watch videos with zero ads and some that are too controversial for YouTube, and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Thanks again for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next video.